Hey there, if you saw the first mistakes video, you know what this is about. This is going to cover the mistakes in down the rabbit hole from the last mistakes video to now. So before we get into the mistakes of the individual episodes, I wanted to address something. I know a lot of people don't like that I've shared my face because it ruins the magic for them. So first, I've been doing stuff online and sharing my face for a while, so if someone wanted to find it, it wouldn't have been hard anyway. Second, I want to give the channel a sense of honesty, and sharing my face is sort of a way to illustrate that. Also, live streams, where do they go? So, while they were fun, they didn't really fit the tone of this channel. I haven't deleted them completely, they're still unlisted on this channel, but I also uploaded them publicly to another channel, which I have inventively called Frederick Newton the other channel. That's basically going to be the home of other content I do that just doesn't fit on this main channel. Um, I'm going to be doing podcasts with fine artist and comic artist Elise McCall. She's also the person that created the Down the Rabbit Hole logo, and helped me with the Sonichu criticism livestream. Don't worry, nothing I do on that second channel will get in the way of my core content. So the Neopets episode. As far as I'm aware, the facts on this one were fine, and a lot of that is thanks to Pet Simmer Julie. She was there with me writing the script. Um, the one mistake that I might have made was the channel plug in the middle of the episode. That was my idea. I didn't have a whole lot to repay her with except for exposure, and I wanted to make sure that people would be able to see her channel like in a place where I knew they would see it. In retrospect, it didn't really fit the episode, and I should have placed it at the end. The Henry Darger episode. This one, I'm pretty sure was fine. Not a lot to add. This is one of the episodes I'm most proud of. So the Finger Family videos. I understand that around the time and a little after I posted my video, there were a bunch of other videos discussing the Elsa Gate scandal. God, that is a bad name. Honestly, I was more concerned with the Finger Family videos specifically, so I didn't get into Elsa Gate where I maybe should have. So the Mouse Utopia experiments. I ended up calling the mice in the second experiment rats. Where the rats? Also, his name is Robert Malthus, not Malthus. It's one of my sillier errors. So the Digital Homicide finale. This one was mostly okay. One thing that I neglected to mention was that the system they used to distribute their free codes demanded that the person follow them on Twitter, but it didn't demand that they like them on Facebook. Uh, that would account for some of the followers on Twitter, but I'm still dubious as to the legitimacy of a lot of their followers. Time Cube. First of all, it's pronounced Greenwich, not Green Witch. This is another one of those things that I've been doing for a long time and just never got corrected on. Also, I screwed up a couple of the subtitles in the Gene Ray Time Cube experience. That's the bit where Richard Yancharsky went to Gene Ray's home to film him. Um, I did all those in a day and it was a very long day. First of all, in the bit where I say he's unintelligible, he's actually saying end up accepting. Um, I think what threw me off was the wonky verb tense. Then right after that, he says, they're mostly religious, not they're more into the religious. I listened to each of those lines like a dozen times, and I still couldn't get them right, and yet I was able to get some of the nigh unintelligible stuff right. I don't know why. Sorry about that. <laughs> Finally, Rajneesh Puram. Okay, mini rabbit hole time. At the beginning of the video, I bring up the smallpox blankets. I now understand that there isn't a strong historical consensus about them. While Native Americans did die in unbelievable numbers to smallpox, there isn't a preponderance of evidence that any of it was deliberately caused by giving them infected blankets. In one instance, we have evidence that British officials gave Native Americans two infected blankets and one infected handkerchief in a deliberate attempt to spread smallpox. While there was a breakout shortly afterward, it's only circumstantial evidence that they actually succeeded. We also have letters between British higher-ups of them suggesting the tactic to one another. However, we don't have hard concrete evidence that it was performed outside of this one instance, though it seems pretty likely that they did. People try to argue that the British wouldn't have known that the disease would transfer because they didn't know germ theory, but there was a limited understanding of how disease propagated. To draw a comparison, it's not like someone needs to understand fluid mechanics to use or even build a boat. Here's an excerpt from Jonathan B. Tucker's book Scourge, The Once and Future Threat of Smallpox. I'll pause the video and read it if you like. Okay, mini rabbit hole, over. I'm concerned that I didn't portray enough of the positive things that happened on Rajneeshpuram. As a whole, they performed incredible feats, like they repaired the riparian zone of the John Day River, they revitalized the soil, they were doing organic farming before it was even really a thing, 
and tons of animals came back to live in the area. The work was brutal, but they achieved what seemed impossible in the Oregon desert. Also, apparently their food was amazing. Uh, locals would say that if you wanted good food in Wasco County, you went to Rajneeshpuram. Another thing that I mentioned was that Rajneesh had Learjets, but I kept showing pictures of propeller planes. I'm not 100% sure where the error was, but I'm certain that one of my sources said he had Learjets. My guess is that he kept propeller planes on the Rajdishpram airstrip, and then he kept his Learjets elsewhere or he rented them. Accounts are kind of conflicting. Also, I mentioned a quote saying it was from the New York Times, it was actually from the New Yorker. I mentioned that Sheila was given 20 years in prison but was let out after two years. That apparently was misreported. Prosecutors were attempting to put her away for 20 years, but she took a special plea bargain called an Alford plea, so she only served two. Also, I said that Rajneeshpuram acquired assault rifles legally, but then said they were stopped when they tried to get automatic weapons. That statement makes no sense. One of the requirements of calling something an assault rifle is that it can swap between firing modes, including automatic fire. I enjoy going to the gun range, but I'm not exactly a gun nut, so this was just kind of a silly mistake. And that's about it. I might have missed a few, but those are the ones that I really wanted to cover. Alright, thank you very much everyone, and I'll see you next time.